Morning. So uh, this is not the video that we wanted to be making this week or expected to be making, to be honest. <laughs> amidst us selling the house, amidst us moving out and uh, moving into the van, uh, I am on my way to the hospital where Molin has been since yesterday. She's been struggling with a pain in her stomach, quite a bad pain since Saturday, today's Wednesday. So after a few days of that, she decided to go to the hospital, go to uh, A&E, uh, the ER, just to see if they could figure out uh, what it was that was causing uh, the pain. You know, after after having a uh, pain in your stomach for a few days, uh, after what Molly's been through, obviously it's better to go and get stuff checked out. So they did some scans yesterday and found that Molly's got quite a large amount of fluid in her abdomen, uh, which seems to be causing pain, discomfort, and also working its way up and causing stomach cramps and stuff like that as well. So they did a, uh, a CT scan without contrast yesterday. For those of you who've watched us before and followed along with the, uh, the cancer journey, you might remember that uh, Molin is extremely allergic to iodine-based contrast, which they give you before CT scans. So they did a, uh, a CT scan without the contrast yesterday. And um, because they couldn't clearly see the cause of it, they decided to get in contact with Mollin's allergy doctor to see if there was any way that they could do it with contrast. So nervous times, to be honest. The, the allergic reaction that she had before was extreme. And the decision that the allergy doctor made last time was that she should never have iodine-based contrast if it wasn't absolutely necessary. And the decision that they came to was that it was absolutely necessary, that the risk of an allergic reaction was less of a risk than not knowing what this was. So she had the contrast and she had the CT scan and it didn't show much because apparently the con contrast wasn't in the right place it hadn't made its way down far enough yet so that was last night and uh, this morning she's just gone down for another scan now so we'll see what the results of that show if anything one of the first sort of quite alarming things yesterday was that Mullins infection values inflammation values i think it is um crp i think is the the actual term for it crp values uh was very very high uh, which suggests that she's got some sort of infection or a body's fighting something off which um, which makes sense if she's got fluid where it shouldn't be but that is on its way down after they've given her some antibiotics so uh, that's also uh, also quite good quite positive so um yeah it's just to, just to wait and see what the uh, results from this scan show this morning hopefully it's an easy fix and nothing all too serious it feels like it never ever ends you know we just got some good news from uh, Mullins checkups MRI results and stuff that all looked clear and a biopsy on something that they found which actually came back all clear which is obviously good and then you know we had sort of a couple of days of, of clarity if you like of feeling positive and being able to breathe again and then this happens but I am uh, I'm gonna go and see her now anyway at the hospital so um, yeah tag along we'll go and see how she's doing <laughs> You're feeling, uh, feeling terrible, aren't you? <laughs> More for his life, mate. <laughs> Best buddies here? Yeah. <laughs> Not eating for 18 days. <laughs> no, like 36 hours maybe. What's that mean? It's been 84 years. <laughs> yeah. That's what it feels like, yeah. to be honest. Mm, 20, 30 hours yeah. since you had two cracker breads. <laughs> rule of life eat instead of breakfast because you never know what's waiting <laughs> yeah always eat good breakfast because yeah. <laughs> you never know because you never know don't come sit down yeah so a week and a half before we uh move out of the house and into the van is this where you want it to be this was not the plan, mm, but no. here we are again. Yes. <laughs> yeah, today it is uh, nine days. Is it? Is that what it is? Nine days, Until, is it? Yeah. Uh, we're moving out. 
we've got a lot to do. <laughs> yeah, same before. The house is full still. Yeah. yeah. Pretty much. Yeah, but we got help. We got, like, it feels full, but uh, most wardrobes and um, drawers and stuff like that is empty. So yeah. it's not too much, like, little stuff to do, but it's a lot of big stuff to do. <laughs> yeah. We'll get it done. We'll, get it, we'll done. get it done. We'll get it sorted. We've got a lot of people that can help us, so it's not a problem. In worst case scenario, then we just have to pack everything that we got and put it into the storage or like into mum and dad's house or something yeah. and go through it after a move out date. Yeah. It's not. Just shove it all it into did. a box, into yeah. boxes and just. And it's sort not it how we later. want to do it and it's not the easy way to do it. Like it's so much harder to go through if it's already been packed once. Yeah. But it is what it is. It is what it is. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. So we'll we'll sort it. Yeah. We'll sort it. Yeah. But um, how are you feeling? Like right this second? <laughs> Not quite good. Not too bad. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, but I've been in a lot of pain. Like, yeah. In a lot, a lot of pain. On Monday morning, I got up for a wee. I felt really sick, so then I thought, oh, I'm, I'm going to sit on the floor for a bit in case I need to be sick, in mm. case I need to throw up. And I got really bad cramps. I lay down on the bathroom mat, and then I couldn't get up again. So I had to text you. Yeah. Because <laughs> I didn't want to scream because I don't want to worry the kids, obviously. No. So luckily, I had my phone in my pocket. Uh, so I texted you and said, like, can you please come and help me up because I can't get up. Yeah, well, like, you actually said, much... I don't know what to do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because exactly. uh, I was in so much pain. Yeah. And people who know me know that when I'm in that much pain, it's a lot of it's pain. It's real. Yeah. Yeah, I was saying this uh, to somebody the other day that you've had, you've been through two childbirths, one of which was without pain killer. Mm. Like Bella, you didn't have any pain, pain relief, relief no. at all. So you know what pain is. Yeah. You know, and after everything you've been through with your operations and stuff. Mm. Yeah, your, your pain threshold is... Uh, it's quite high. Pretty high, yeah. So when you're in that much pain, it's something pretty serious. Yeah. And then I spoke to, like, doctors and nurses and stuff on Monday. Maybe I shouldn't say this, but everybody told me to go to the A&E, uh, yeah. the ER. And I thought, I'm not doing that again. I'll just wait out. That. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, that's not what I thought. I thought like oh, I hate being sat for like eight, nine hours and then get dancer. You can go home now. Yeah. Talk to your doctor. Mm. So I thought, not doing it. No. And then when he hadn't passed properly like yesterday morning, I spoke to another nurse. I didn't get an appointment with my surgeon until Friday. Mm. Well, we discussed it and we said, oh, we'll see if we go or not. Yeah. Because I was feeling a bit better. I still had pain, but not like the insane amount of pain. Yeah. And then my mum rang me and she was like, we're going. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And now with, what do you say, with my faucet hand? I don't know what you say in English. You're no, in hindsight. But, yeah. Yeah, in hindsight. It was obviously good because they, my infection values were really, really high again. On 171, should be below five. Uh, and I asked, I was like, oh, because my kid's got a cold, could I have not just got the kid's cold in my body? And he was like, if you got a normal cold, you're on 25. And he was like, if you got really, really bad cold, like can't get out of bed kind of cold. The, the COVID worst, flu type thing. The worst, worst kind of COVID kind of thing. Maybe you're on 125. Mm. Oh, okay. <laughs> so 180, 120, yeah. whatever. Pretty high. Yeah, so after that, he was like, it's not good, but good for you. You're not prioritised. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's good then. Um, then I got a scan, and they did a scan without contrast, because I'm super allergic to contrast, as we all know. <laughs> and they could see something, but not all of it. So they said we need to do a scan with contrast. Mm. And they spoke to my allergy doctor, and even though he has said, you should never, ever, ever have contrast again, it's a higher risk to leave this than it is to try the contrast with uh, some medicine and uh, find out what is the cause of the problem. So now we're on round four. 
<laughs> so it's Gans and round two of uh, contrast. With contrast, yeah. When you say contrast, it's the iodine-based contrast yeah. stuff that they give you for CT scans, isn't it? Yeah. And unfortunately, you have started breaking out a little bit. Yeah. You? You've got a bit of a rash on your belly and stuff. So it's just to wait and see. But they're taking it seriously, at least. They're monitoring it and uh, keeping an eye on your your levels and stuff, aren't they? So. Yeah. It's just to wait and see. They've got three different things that they think it could be. Mm-hmm. Where two out of the three ends with surgery. <laughs> but we don't need to sit and uh, go through every worst case scenario what they're investigating. They are investigating the smaller intestines and seeing why they look inflammated or infected or whatever you would call it. And they're also looking at the space, the place where the uterus uh, used to be mm. and seeing if it's any kind of damage there that yeah. could be causing all of this. Uh, because apparently now, because they removed the uterus and the colon, I don't know if that's how they say it, <laughs> apparently it is, the small intestines have now like fallen down into the place where uh, the uterus used to be. Mm. So it could be something... Which is also where the fluid is. Exactly. So it's like really so hard they, to see where it's coming from. You can't from. say if it like comes from the smaller intestines or if it comes from something where the uterus used to be. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, they've got a few bits to investigate, haven't they? Um, yeah. And we'll see what happens. I think we'll know more this evening after your scans and stuff, won't yeah, we? Yeah, so. I would imagine so. Yeah, I'm going to finish my lovely drink mm. and you're going to go down and have food you traitor yeah i did say i could fast with you in solidarity if uh, if you wanted me to you already you already failed at that because i bet you had breakfast this morning yeah maybe. and dinner last night yeah well, and lunch yesterday yeah but i mean i can fast with you in solidarity <laughs> like from now on i meant like while we're together and stuff not you know what i mean <laughs> come on <laughs> cut me a bit of slack i'm having a, i'm having a hard time here <laughs> It must be really hard for you. <laughs> yeah. So with it being uh, so late on in the week, it's Wednesday now. Um, we're normally a little bit more in advance with recording videos and stuff. Yeah. We'll probably leave the video here and pick up again next week because yeah. we need time to edit it and stuff. So. Yeah. Uh, so join us again next week uh, on Friday and see how this plays out. See if we're still in hospital or not. Yeah, or if we're living in a van. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> Join in on the madness. See if it's been um, a birthday party or not. Oh, yeah, it's meant to be birthdays this weekend as well, isn't it? Yeah. Three days until I turn 30. Shit, I didn't even think about that. God. Seven days until Charlie turns four. Fucking hell, I need to go birthday present shopping. <laughs> <laughs> right, I'm going. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Madness. Madness. Join us next week. Hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs> Go away. <laughs>